Hello and welcome to the Nashville Daily Podcast. I'm Stuart Deming. And I'm Aaron Pennington. Ten years ago, an article in the New York Times named Nashville the It City. Now, a decade later, opinion pieces are being written wondering if we still have whatever it is. We dig into what people are saying about Nashville today and determine once and for all if Nashville is still the It City. We'll talk about all of this and more on Nashville Daily. A lot to talk about today. Heavy topics. Before we get into them, uh, let us know in the comments right now what you think about Nashville. Is it still the It City? Does it still have that It City gusto? And what is it? What <laughs> What is it? Uh, if it's not the It City, what did it lose? Or maybe you thought it was never the It City. Leave your comments uh, on there, and we will probably read them on the air. We're going to talk about some uh, YouTube comments from a few videos ago when we talked about In and Out uh, that seemed to get a good bit of attention. So we're going to read a little bit of that. Before we get into that, today's episode is brought to you by uh, Your Next Home. And you can find your next home with the help of Brad Reynolds, a real estate agent here in Nashville. And you can get a hold of Brad. You can call or text him. You don't have to go through a, a weird chat portal to even get. You can just call or text Brad, 615-856-3270. He said on this show, He's never changing this number. Uh, so you can go to thinkbrad.com to learn more about Brad. He has an amazing YouTube channel at Think Brad. Talks about what's uh, the latest in the market as well as a little bit on national real estate and some national neighborhoods. You can also reach him on Instagram uh, with Brad underscore Reynolds underscore Nashville. But if you're thinking Nashville, think Brad and think your new home. Well, so speaking of Brad Reynolds, he actually commented on our in and out video that came out last week. And he said, secure artifacts makes it look like sound like the Raiders of the lost. Ark." <laughs> ha. Uh, if you don't understand that comments, you need to watch the video. I was talking about the closing of the George Jones museum in downtown Nashville on second <laughs> Avenue. And I saw them loading the artifacts of George, George Jones into this van and then Brad ended up sending me all these clips about Indiana Jones. Yes, yes. Uh, so <laughs> speaking of comments, um, Aaron, there is some big hype around in and out coming to Tennessee. Oh like it's, yeah, it, it's probably it's it's almost it as is, important. It is a hundred as the new Titan State. It is a hundred percent the number one news story so far in Tennessee for twenty twenty three. There's not a doubt about it. But the Titan Stadium is definitely going to surpass it very soon. It, it 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 would, but right now it has not yeah, in and out <laughs> secured just, the new spot. It's just a slow time, right it, now, it, folks. It is. Uh, so uh, a few comments. One from Steve Colley. Uh, he said in and out. He said they need. No, I've not had in and out. So you've had an in, in and out. But Steve I, said I in and out needs bigger buns. Bigger buns, folks. Uh, bigger buns. They they need bigger buns. They don't got buns, hun. Uh, no, he didn't say that. He said they fall apart too easy. Comment that, please. and then you're. He said, then you're left with a mess. So, sir, you're saying that is that is absolutely the case well, with my one experience of in and out. Yes, <laughs> they are lacking in the buns department <laughs> in and out. Get your buns in order. All right. Uh, so, uh, another will comment. I live in Alabama and I'm excited about in and out coming to Middle Tennessee. And then it's like the hallelujah praise signs, like six of them. Hallelujah. And uh, Rob said, I've been to multiple in and outs in several different states. I've he said this is talking about locations. We were trying to guess maybe where. Uh, in and outs locations are going to be. He said, I found them close to where people live, mostly in small shopping center type locations. First one's going to be in Cool Springs, folks, right next Ooh, to the Cool Springs you Gallery. So? Oh, hands down. Okay. Hands so down. He, he said, even though I never have to drive far to reach one when in California, they were always busy with cars wrapped around the building, but the lines moved quickly. That's most of the Chick fil A's in town besides the one on 8th Avenue. So if they're in small shopping type areas, Hillsboro Village. Would be an amazing it's, spot for it's it. It's so hard because drive through over there is going to be very. Is, is that a requirement for In and Out? Do believe, you think I they believe they're they mostly drive through locations? I don't know. Um, but because yes. yeah, Hillsboro Village would be out if that was the case. I, I think still my Midtown kind of like a cookout location type deal yeah. would, would secure a great spot for it. But I, I still think Cool Springs Galleria. They could probably um, rival the Chick Fil A Church Street area. 
Oh yeah. There's still, there's space over there. There's tons of space over there. Especially if they have a drive through, if they should Charlotte, that would be amazing. But the issue with all of these streets you're mentioning is the traffic <laughs> is already so bad. Oh, hundred like percent. They're going to have to build their like Metro center, do, Metro center. Yes. Would be pretty cool. Yes. Especially if the new hospital going over yeah. there uh, with all the stuff going into the German town. But I, I think the first market's going to be Franklin. I just have a feeling it's going to be Cool Springs. That'll be that'll be very interesting. Uh, maybe Fifth and Broad. I've heard Fifth and Broad from a few people. That's interesting because Shake Shack. I know Shake Shack how's is there. That, how's that going to work? Shake Shack. Out? They they uh, they came in at the right time. All right. So another comment that came in. I'm glad it's coming here. Hope it will maintain the flavor of the food as it is in California. And I maybe hope the beef that will be better. Will expand. Yes, because Tennessee beef is better than California beef. Fight me on that. <laughs> um, and I hope that they will expand to other parts of Tennessee, like Hendersonville. They'll definitely go to Hendersonville. That's yeah. They, they will be in Hendersonville in 10 years. Read this next part of it. And I agree with you uh, in all in all regards to what a burger. So I think that's oh. what a burger supposed to be. What a burger. It's not all that. Okay, yeah, they, yeah. Okay, I was confused because there's no dashes for yeah, yeah. For what <laughs> uh, so that was, that was a good comment. Um, yeah, these are these are great comments. So uh, engage a little bit more on our comment session. Well, we'll start yeah, reading them. I was about to say, comment on what you you think. We might just read it on air. Also, make sure you are subscribed to this podcast channel, Nashville Daily Podcast. Uh, if you are watching this, then you know that. But make sure that you are subscribed if you are listening. Uh, or are watching so that way you don't miss anything. Um, also, we will be, we, we've talked about this. This is an episode in the archives uh, just a few weeks ago. We call It's called uh, Nashville Daily Podcast in 2023 or National Daily in 2023. I can't remember at this point. Um, but it was a few weeks ago. We talked about some of the new formats that we are bringing to the podcast this year. Uh, and we will be doing that on our 1000th episode. We'll be starting that stuff. And that is on January 31st. I believe that's January, a Tuesday. January 31st. It's a Tuesday. Uh, so you, you may see us. Uh, obviously, we are in a studio and uh, we will need to adjust a few things for our set for that new format. And so uh, we will have a few construction days where we will still be bringing you the podcast, uh, but it will not be from this set. So bear with us maybe, on those maybe days. Be, uh, under construction sign. Yeah. <laughs> That would be pretty funny. Um, but, uh, so that will be under construction day. So bear with us on those days. We'll still be bringing you uh, our podcast, but they will just look and sound a little bit different for a few days while we get ready for the new format. Um, so that is, uh, and, and I'm, I'm looking forward to tomorrow's episode as well, because uh, we're going to make you hungry again as we're going to be uh, talking just a little bit over the next few days about our recent release of our Cletus burger videos, maybe the best smash burgers in Nashville. You can watch that video. We're going to be providing some commentary over the next few days on that video, uh, but you can watch that video on our YouTube channel, xplr.nash on there to see the whole thing and then uh, come back over the next few days as we break down some of the portions of the behind the scenes of that video and just our general experience of uh, being at one of our favorite uh, new places, Cletus. So today's episode is also brought to you by Blessed Day Coffee, and I am drinking that right now. Yes, I, you are. Uh, I got about four hours of sleep. <laughs> so am I and, here. And <laughs> uh, I'm drinking out of my new favorite mug from The Chosen, which is my favorite TV show that's ever been made. Also, OGs will remember this mug uh, right here. OG, OG. I kind of like, okay, so th let's talk about this for a second. We got this mug uh, probably after the first few hundred episodes that no, we no, recorded, it was, it was, was it earlier? It was earlier. Uh, we got the mugs. Let's see. We started at probably the first 150 episodes. Kind of has our, got, uh, our old, uh, national daily logo on it. Yeah. And then I, uh, I didn't know anything about mugs. And <laughs> so when you order it, you're like, well, this was a different color scheme and now it's all white. It's, it's all I've white learned. print. I have, but, learned. but I like it. I do like too. like I've yeah. grown to really really like this mug. Yeah. Uh, we we used to we ordered how many mugs did we order? Uh, a lot. 
Well, did we order a hundred or 500? It was like 300. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we used to give these mugs away yeah. to all the guests who had come into the studio. Now that we're bringing more guests into the studio, we're, we're going to have to find something to do. We, we these are some... like the OG. These are like the OG merch. That's like yeah. going to be on eBay for $5,000 in like 10 years. Maybe, but, so. be awesome. <laughs> but only because it's rare, not because it's popular, just yeah. because it's rare. Because it's so fake. <laughs> that's why. Um, but yeah, these are, these are, I love these, love these the, mugs uh, and, we're excited for whatever we're going to do next. For, not, for, not sure for, what that is. for the guests coming in, I'm excited about some of the gifts. We'll be uh, talking about those gifts here in the future. Yes, of but what we're giving guests. In the meantime, you if need you, to get yourself some coffee. Yeah, if Let's, you want to give, give yourself a gift. Yeah. Give yourself the gift of amazing coffee roasted right here in Nashville with some of the most fresh and sustainable coffee beans that you can find on this planet. And you can get it at a discount 20% off using the discount code XPLR. 20 at checkout and if you're in the nashville area you don't even have to uh drive to go and get this and it, it is delivered right to you for free there, could, uh, uh, there may be a situation where there could be like a coffee meetup Ooh. i don't know maybe, let us know maybe, let maybe, us yeah. know on the, in the comments if you'd be interested for a coffee meetup i think that would be um, a pretty fun thing to do in I, one of our studios i, I think it would as well yeah. maybe a tasting yeah it looks or a cupping i don't know what they call i forgot cupping? what they I forgot what they a call a tasting uh, cup. Uh, I forgot what they call uh, uh, tasting of, of coffee. I think it may, may, is, is it a cupping? I don't know. Uh, I'm going to have to get more culture. Comment, comment below. All right. So 2013 was a big year for the city of Nashville. And the primary reason for that is this huge thing called the Music City Convention Center opened. I can't believe that thing is 10 years old. Uh, which is yeah, kind that's of wild. crazy. And they've done renovations on it. So like all, there's parts of it that are newer. There's parts of it that are older. And uh, or it, it, 2013 was a big year because the Music City Center was coming into Nashville. It's also the year that you and I moved here. Okay. We didn't know each yes. other. Then. We, we didn't know each other. then. <laughs> uh, and now we have built this incredible business. And uh, another really cool thing is the New York Times. There was a journalist from the New York Times that said Nashville was the it city. At one point, uh, Portland, uh, Oregon was the it city. Austin, Texas was the it city. And if you even go back in records, Dallas, Texas was the it city in, in the 80s. Nashville Whoa. in 2013 got that title, the it city. Has anything been named the it city after that? No. Not that, I, not that I've, from my brief 15-minute research, <laughs> I have not seen anything else. I haven't heard. We would have, I think we would have heard. If uh, if something if, if another city had been named the maybe city, it's, maybe it's every fifteen years. Maybe, I maybe until the crown gets uh, gets passed on. Yeah, we will talk about what we think the next it city is uh, after we talk about the current it city. <laughs> uh, so, two thousand thirteen, um, Kim Severson with the New York Times released an article talking about Nashville's it city. In this article, she talked about the healthcare boom and how Nashville is basically all half of healthcare decisions in the United States come from the city of Nashville. And now I think it's it's higher. Uh, it's probably higher. <laughs> uh, most of the music industry is here, like especially the big Warner, Sony. Yes, um, still correct. And, and that's a huge thing. And then they were talking about just the the impact of the sports arenas, the Tennessee Titan Stadium. It's only Bridgestone got more in downtown. It's Nashville. only increased. And it's only increased. And then there there was a Gallup poll about the startup uh, atmosphere in Nashville. So oh, looking, interesting. Looking at a uh, a technology standpoint, when technology companies starting here in Nashville, Nashville that shifted is, a little bit. It is, yeah, it has. Nashville is one of the leading innovative cities in the world. It is the uh, the unfortunate thing is the pandemic changed that. Uh, it, which Nashville is still out of the the larger cities. Uh, obviously, there's there's Silicon Valley, but um, for, for now, yeah, for now, right? Um, but in Nashville, Actually, be, everything is going to be called the Cumberland Plateau. Yeah, in, in the southeast of the bigger cities, Nashville has still has that market. But what the pandemic changed is that people can uh, really, really shifted, and they said, "I'm going to do a startup from um, you, you know no name town." North Carolina, Tennessee, uh, Texas, Florida. So the Nashville, w without the pandemic, I think Nashville would have gotten probably another major percentage of that. But I know, I know, a lot of those have spread over to smaller areas. Well, even then, um, 
I can't remember the exact records of filing of how many businesses were started. Over the oh, last it's, two years, it's a lot. <laughs> Nashville still had more businesses started. Yes, in 100%. the last two years than like the last decade. And yes, so it, it's absolutely. Like a really interesting number because Nashville still, we're, we're thriving. Our GDP is one of the highest in the nation. Uh, the jobs in this area, we have one of the lowest unemployments in the in the country, uh, and we have one of the lowest unemployments in the history of the state of Tennessee. Yeah, we, we have one we, of the highest number of council members in the city in this in, in, the, in, in the, the country. United States. That's another <laughs> topic. Um, and so the, the Nashville, in the sense, I, I would say we are thriving more than we were thriving in 2013. Yes. From, from a fiscal sense, not not from a debt sense, since Nashville still has extreme debt of about $4 billion. Yes. But from a fiscal sense of companies relocating here. You have, in that time, in that 10 years, you have Google making an announcement in Clarksville. You have Amazon announcing a downtown location in Nashville. iHeartRadio. You have iHeartRadio, Oracle. All of these other companies from California that I can't even remember. In and out. <laughs> That's a big deal. There's probably a California company moving to Nashville once a month over the past few years. Or or more. Yeah. Yeah. And I've I've been on phone major, calls. Major uh, major companies. I, I've been on phone calls with some of these people from California relocating to nashville and so that that's always an interesting phone call like they call me and they're like hey i heard you're the guy to talk to about nashville i i would say i am and it's just it's very fascinating but there's been so much growth from a population standpoint to an economic standpoint to the job market like it just and then and now we have truly become the ev state so electric vehicle state with the ford plant the gm yeah. Nissan, like all of these huge announcements uh, that over the last 10 years. So those are the things that were mentioned in the New York Times article that also that have just absolutely blossomed and gotten uh, more. Now, with and those are the things that uh, from the New York Times article qualified Nashville to be the it city, not you know, not even mentioning what do you think it means? A lot of the other factors. So the it city to me means that if you are choosing a place to live or vacation, there is Nashville has the attention. It's it of everybody. They don't people don't know necessarily what it is, but they want to be here. Yep. Um, there's and, and and a lot of those reasons are a lot of the reasons you mentioned are for people to live here. Yep. Like that. That's enough to draw major, major uh, uh, crowds of people to live here on the tourist side. It's the events. It's the sports. It's the downtown atmosphere. Um, it's the combination of outdoors a mm -hmm. little bit. That is not as known for Nashville, which I think will change in, the next, in the next decade. I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll expand on some yeah. of that stuff towards the end of the episode. Um, but it, there's enough, there's, there's a draw on every single side of Nashville on the tourist side to come and visit mm -hmm. with, and, and that's a testament to more of the music city center side mm -hmm. of things and the grand old Opry side of things and the Gaylord side of things. Um, then it is the, uh, then, then it is the economic stuff for the tourist side of things, but the events, and the, just the major uh, factors of the downtown culture have brought a lot of people here. We, we've talked a lot about the, uh, the negatives that have been brought up about downtown Nashville. But without some of those downtown uh, things, people can discover other things in Nashville. They come for the downtown mm -hmm. and then they discover everything else in Nashville. So that's kind of one of the, the draws. And, of course, the, the music scene here draws both of the uh, tourists and the people to live here alike. Um, and th th that's one of the things that almost goes without saying because the national dominates that, that side of things, uh, uh, very, very much. Yeah. So I, I think, uh, when I think of the it city, I think of cities like New York and Chicago a hundred years ago, these cities were thriving. People, people were writing songs about them. People, yeah, yes. People were writing songs about them. That's what's happening in Nashville now. People were flocking to New York. People and go know, to these cities to dream. Yeah. It, that, 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 that's a big definition for an city. Some, I'm going to offend somebody right here, <laughs> uh, but I'm going to say it. I, I've, I've been talking to a lot of my friends in New York City, and it seems like now that they've been living there for a while, 
their dreams have died. I don't think you're going to offend anybody with that. So it's just, <laughs> and it's, it's just a dangerous city right now. And it's like people were flocking to those cities in the early 1900s. And yes, we have the ports and the, the immigration and all that stuff. But people were flocking here for the dream. I think Nashville, and they were flocking to Chicago for the dream. I think Nashville is where New York City and Chicago were 100 years ago. Yeah, it, it's unfortunate that it'll still take uh, <laughs> Nashville that 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 long to reach the size of some of those those cities. If it if, 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 if it ever gets to that, yeah. it, it may never. It I hope it doesn't. Yeah, uh, you you really really never know. Um, but uh, let's let's talk about the. So we've talked a lot about the positives of Nashville. Now, what has happened in the last ten years that has been on the slippery slope on the negative side? Is it the party buses? Um, hmm. the party buses could be on the negative side, depending on how you look at it, because there's always an equilibrium. If you have too many party buses, then, uh, you're not going to get there's too the, much party. There, there's too much party. Uh, that's what the, uh, the, the, uh, business journal, uh, did a kind of a Q and a with the, the woman who wrote the New York times, it's city article 10 years ago. They did a, a recently a, an update with her. She said the party buses were too much for her is too overwhelming. Like there's just there was too much party, uh, so it was a little bit overwhelming, and and so you you might uh, detract a crowd that way. Um, the things that have gotten worse over the past decade, uh, the roads have gotten worse. Oh, they're so bad. A lot of things that that would uh, not be an issue for tourists, but are the issues for people moving here. Mm -hmm. um, the roads, the traffic, the school systems, um, honestly, the politics. Yep. Um, let's see. And one thing that will deter citizens, uh, people moving here and tourists is crime. Hands down. Um, so th those are a lot of the things that have been on the downswing for Nashville. We've talked plenty on the podcast. I don't think we have to go too much into detail um, about that. Now, some of those things people can overcome traffic. People can, uh, you know, excuse for a growing city. There, there's some things that can be excused just for a growing city, as long as we are on the right path to handle them. Um, but there are a lot of things where the it factor, um, can only hold up for so long and can mm -hmm. only, uh, can only be a front for what problems we're having for so long before uh, those problems are overtaking and, and are, are more about the conversation than the positives of what's going on with Nashville for people who uh, for people who don't really know what's going on with Nashville. And that's that's the thing you always want for an it city for the 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 shine, the glitz and the glamour to be the thing that people are talking about, not the potholes, the crime traffic, the politics. Um, and so you always want the, the glitz and the glamor and the it factor to outshine that. Um, and, and, uh, th th that is the interesting thing is most people outside of Nashville, they don't know what's truly happening in the city. Yeah. So outs inside of Nashville is Nashville still the it city. Don't know outside of Nashville. Nashville is absolutely still the it city, I think. Oh, especially from an investment standpoint. They're, yeah. they're, they're seeing what's happening here with these investments that are selling for $799 million. Yes. And they're like, I want a piece of that pie. Now, the, inter the interesting part about that, I don't want to get too much into detail on that, is there's still a lot to be uh, discovered on if these, because of the post-pandemic people working from mm -hmm. home, if those skyscrapers are going to be filled. I think they will. I, I, I think I, they I, will. I think there's enough point, demand. At some point, they will. Um, <laughs> at some point. <laughs> at some, in the next 20 years, they will. Yeah, yeah. Because a lot of employers are saying, hey, you need to be back in person. Yeah. And it, so, yeah, it'll be very interesting to see in five years if, if a lot of things that may be emptied out of the pandemic got filled back up. Or they turn into hotels. That, that, like, that's just that the, that's the thing that's <laughs> happening here in Nashville. It's very it's true. Abandoned build, not abandoned buildings. These buildings that don't have any offices any longer are turning into hotels. Yeah. Which makes sense. I do want to read this quote real quick. So the National Business Journal asked, what are some changes you've noticed over the years? And uh, Kim goes on to say to the Business Journal, the notion of the Nashville hot chicken, the way that it has, uh, yeah, let me restart. The notion of the Nashville hot chicken, the way that it has shot through the nation, that part of Nashville culture hadn't been exp exported to the rest of the country. True. It felt like some of Nashville's culture has been so commercialized and sucked out 
that it wasn't special anymore. I 100% disagree with that. Yeah, I, I disagree with that. Nashville didn't... Aside from country music, Nashville didn't have... Aside, the so, healthcare, healthcare. Yeah, well, well yeah. as a culture, like, what is what is the Nashville culture? Nashville was still, besides the, the very much uh, uh, southern... A, a southern city with good music and a friendly place, and, and the charm. So yeah, and, and yeah, like yes, the yes. southern hospitality yeah. charm. Nashville, we're still finding it. I, I think. agree. I agree. Nashville is still finding um, how to define what it is that makes Nashville special. We've got all the reasons we talked about, but Nashville doesn't have. It, I mean, besides the country music, um, it, it is very hard from an outsider's perspective to see anything else other than country music. Um, and so that's been exported through the world for so long. Um, music itself is a commercialization business. So yes. Um, yes. it's, it, I really disagree that, that uh, Nashville's culture has been so commercialized and sucked out that it wasn't special anymore. Nashville's still really finding out what it means to be an, to export a Nashville thing. Um, one of the things that I've said on the podcast before is as Nashville is growing, what it's doing is it's, it's, it's not exporting a lot. It's importing a lot. It's yeah. importing a lot of things that have been successful in other big cities. And they're, they're being trying to try it out here to see what works and make it a Nashville style. And then that, that is what is happening with Nashville. We're kind of making those things our own. And then we're, we're trying to figure out exactly how we expand that as a city. I don't think Nashville has reached a point of it's so commercialized that it's exporting the Nashville feel to a ton of other things. And that's being overdone. I, I really don't think we're at that point yet. So the business journal asked Kim, uh, do you still think Nashville as an it city? She goes on to say, I think it matured past its phase as being a national darling and matured into something else. The question is, can it really endure as one of the great cities of the South? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. We have so much history in this city. We are the darling of the South. It's either us or Charleston. Let's be honest. It's us or Charleston. Well, the interesting thing, I'm trying to see where she she mentioned Charleston right, somewhere so it's in a, here. It's the, uh, go down a little bit. Or yeah, up just slightly. Yep, yep, yep. It's in yep, that paragraph yep. right there. <laughs> uh, so well, I'll keep going. She says uh, the, the the question is: Can you uh, can it really endorse one of the great uh, cities of the South? And that's what uh, I we say, think yes. absolutely. Yes. Uh, New York, for example, there are some really classic places in New York uh, that people want to go and like see. All the caves. Um, yes, but they're not nationally known. <laughs> yeah, we, we've got a, we've got a long way to go before they're nationally and internationally known. Uh, like New York, people want to go see Broadway. Uh, you can still go to Rockefeller Center and Central Park, Lower East Side. She says, but like Lower East Side changed 180 degrees, and somebody who grew up there is going to be like, this is not uh, my Lower East Side, as people are saying that about East Nashville. Uh, also, but people are very glad that that's happening in East Nashville uh, for a lot of reasons. All cities go through that where institutions remain, but the neighborhood, uh, the neighborhood is all changed. Uh, where does it talk about Charleston again? Uh, up, up one more. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Was... Okay. Um, she says, uh, she says, but talk to Charleston and that tourism horse left the barn and you are not getting it back in, which is very, very interesting. She says that causes a lot of problems when focus is more on the tourists than the people who actually live there. So I, I was but in the tourists pay the bills of the people who live there. I was in Charleston um, last year, really not that long ago. Mm -hmm. um, like September, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it was very interesting. Um, it was very much set up like Nashville, where everything was made in the downtown area for tourists, but there weren't that many tourists compared to a Nashville. Uh, and and, and I don't, I don't, I don't the, know. I mean, it could have been at the time of the year. Because that's like <sighs> it was great. It, it, uh, it was a great time of the but year. But like it's hurricane season, so that could prevent people from <laughs> traveling. Like there's a lot of factors. Uh, there is, but I think stuff. I think her point is is that she said, which I, I think it's a fair point. 
uh, talk. They say talk to Charleston and that tours. So I, I think what they're saying, what, what she's saying there is they spent too much effort on making the tourist happy. Um, and it, they, they, f- maybe they feel like it's left a lot of the people in the wake. Um, I don't know if that's true, but, uh, it's, it's an interesting thought. Uh, the people, char- people of Charleston are moving there just like they're moving to Nashville. Mm-hmm. It's a great retirement city right now. I think it's one of the number one retirement cities, mm-hmm. uh, because of, of its, its bay or kind of close to the ocean, still a very Southern, nice a- atmosphere with tons of history, mm-hmm. uh, in a great downtown. Um, but, um, it, it, I don't think it has, um, received the level of tourism activity that Nashville has. I don't know let's, if, let's, let's, I don't know if many places have. And so, um, it's one of those things where, yes, we put a lot of focus on the tourism, um, because there's a lot of long-term gain from that. If you talk to a lot of people who are, um, who, moved to Nashville. How did they move here? They visited here once or twice, and then they decided to move here. So, uh, catering to your tourists is very much like catering to your future residents. So it's very, very interesting. All right. So the population of Charleston, South Carolina in 2023 is 159,269. Right. Which they, they Um, act, they act like a much bigger city. Good for them. Yeah. Good for them. And then, um, the amount of estimated people, this is from 2018, was 7.8 million people visited Charleston. Okay, so about half. So about half of what Nashville receives. We are also w- about three times bigger than Charleston yeah. as a population. Yeah, and so, so good that, for them. That makes sense that we are getting more tourists. I think the thing that Nashville has that's going to keep its character is the neighborhoods. And I, I think there there's a really... Uh, there's a really strong force moving forward to really preserve and protect the character that Nashville has. And yeah, and one one of the other things that I think Nashville has that will keep it as an it city for a long time, uh, and only a few cities, I think, have this, um, and that's the ability. It, it doesn't shut down after 10 o'clock. I, I think that's yep. a huge thing yep. that tourists are looking for. Charleston doesn't have it. They, sh- it, they shut down. They, they don't close their doors, but they're shut down yep. after ten o'clock. Uh, there are only a few cities that I I think really kind of keep the uh, the late night vibes. Uh, I've never been to Vegas, but I know they do. Uh, New Orleans and the Bourbon Street and the French uh, quarters, uh, they absolutely do. Nashville. Uh, I, I've even been to uh, Chicago. Chicago doesn't. Um, New York, unless you're in very certain. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and so, um, I, I don't know about some of the other cities, um, uh, but I really, I th- really think Nashville, New Orleans and Vegas are probably some of the only cities, maybe Miami. I've never been to Miami. Yeah, Miami would be a great nightlife. Um, um, but it's, uh, it's very interesting to uh, I wonder if that has a, a factor in how the city is perceived by tourists is, uh, is being really not shut down past 10 p.m. And I want to point this out real quick. Um, I think we, we've we hit it status, but I think we're going to hit wow status eventually. Does that, is and that better than it status? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Depending on who you're talking to, is it wow because the crime so bad or is it wow because, wow, this city's... Right, so it's going to come down here being wow. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but the reason I say that, and th- this is the, the last point I want to make, yeah. is the reason I say that, if, if you don't mind, we have Greg, the Google guy, hanging up uh, from a hot air balloon. He's okay, from nice. Air. There's an area in Nashville called the East Bank. <sighs> and we this, have, is, this is really the start, the, the, the beginning we, of Nashville right we here. We have talked about the East Bank extensively here on the podcast. I think we have done over 65 episodes. In the last year. Probably. The East Bank. Probably. So you have this huge development down here called the East Bank. It's you a, also have this massive development called River North. It's, these are dang near the size of Nashville's regular downtown when it's all said yes. and done. Yes. Hands down. Then you also have the Newhoff uh, factory, not factory, uh, buildings being over here. And you have the other developments coming on the north side <laughs> of the river. I think Nashville. We're just getting started. Will become a wow city. And the reason for that is people are going to come into downtown Nashville and they're going to say, wow, wow, look at all those new state birds. The crane. Yeah. Yes. Um, I I do want to say one other thing related to Nashville being the it city. I think that 
uh, over the next, you know, you say, uh, you know, over the next however many years this is, 10, 20, 30 years, where, you know, this, whatever Nashville has is going to continue. It's going to morph. It's going to change uh, in some ways and, and hopefully all in better ways and hopefully the bad ways get reduced. Um, but one of the things that I think, because Nashville, uh, one of the, the, the effects of an it's city is not just the Nashville city proper benefits from it, but everything in a, a 100 mile radius. It's like the, it's and, like Lion King. Everything you see, <laughs> everything every the light, light touches, touches is yours, uh, very much benefit from it. If not the entire state mm -hmm. in itself benefits from this. And so what I think will happen is that Nashville, uh, along with a few other factors, and we're not going to get into it because we'd be here for three hours. Uh, along unless, with the, unless you guys want a three-hour show, yeah. comment below. <laughs> <laughs> along with a few other factors, uh, what Nashville has done with a few other factors uh, outside of Nashville uh, is, is we are taking the it city to an it state. state. Yes. Yes. We will be the, and I already be believe this, we are the premier state in the United States. So, the, in, and there's, a, I think Florida and Texas, and Texas have a lot of things going Florida, for it right Texas, now. Florida, Texas, Wyoming, Tennessee. Um, but we, there's a lot of factors that Nashville is, uh, it has, has not really, uh, Nashville and Tennessee, uh, that the world does not know them for, that they will know them for, uh, in a few years, if it, I mean, it takes this stuff takes a while. Yes. Um, and so that's that's what I think is leading up to the spill of the successful things in Nashville and Tennessee are morphing together in order to make Nash from the it city of Nashville to the it state of Tennessee. And it, it's it's going to take a while. But I think that that is what we are going to see. What's fascinating about that is that it, just at the beginning of 2023, we have an announcement of in and out coming. And that is just like a hype train <laughs> for all the other businesses that are associated. It, it's, with it's, it's, it's very much like when w there was a certain point in where we didn't know if the w development had peaked and then Amazon made their announcement mm -hmm. into Nashville and then and Oracle then, came in and then we just did not stop. And, and honestly, you never know if those things were a, a, giant momentum train mm -hmm. uh just like in and out it could be a giant momentum train for a lot of other things to come and then it just doesn't stop after that so uh i, I think that's it. again we could be here for three hours um, just talking about this th yeah talking about this topic <laughs> uh, and some of the other kind of things crazy. uh but, but the, you know if you want if you want those three hour episodes let us know maybe we'll uh maybe we'll do some uh some stuff behind a paywall in yeah, order yeah. To, well, well, to keep talking for three hours the interesting thing is there may be some big big waves in the baseball uh thing too we're gonna be talking about that tomorrow <laughs> there are more rumors because, because more we're rumors getting, we're getting a major league baseball team Wow. <laughs> oh, the gloves are off. Well, wow. I guess they're putting the gloves they're on. on. I don't know. Swinging the bats. Thank you for listening to the Nashville Daily Podcast. If you want to learn more, head to NashvilleDailyPodcast.com. You can also follow us on social media at Explore.Nash on Instagram, Nashville Daily Podcast on YouTube, and Explore.Nash on YouTube as well. The Nashville Daily Podcast is an Explore LLC production, copyright 2023.